Thank you. Let's have some fun. So my name is Anastasia. I work for a company named JetBrains, and we do tools for developers, namely IDEs. And since we don't require a valid license to conduct our support, we actually deal with a bunch of feedback daily. And users mostly think that we do a bunch of unnecessary stuff about instead, uh, like instead of dealing with their precious bugs, like we're holding webinars, which is usually run by me and Phil. We're updating icons, which is usually run by our design team, but who cares? And a bunch of other unnecessary stuff. And we should care about the real world problems, which are here. I completely agree they are real world problem. We even use the second one to train our support engineers. And Let's like a little bit of serious uh, slide. Like the ideal world algorithm, how to report a feedback, is like first of all think about an, an example. Because if your problem actually happens once per year in your code, heavily covered with the NDA, I doubt we could deal with it somehow. So report all the details to us. Like compiler information is extremely important because IDs are mostly behave the same way as the compiler does. So if you don't know your compiler name and version, sorry, and like a bunch of other things, and please keep calm and follow our advices, follow our workflows, and do not go away silently. If it works, come back to us, say that it works, because probably that will help someone else. And this is a perfect example, which I really like. This is a perfect feedback. User provided example, provided a bunch of interesting information. We deal with the problem. Perfect, but the real life is usually different. We got this uh, request like back in 2016, and the person was like saying to us that we have to fix his problem in uh, five days, or he will ask for a refund. In 15 minutes, he st uh, starts shouting at us that we have to deal with the problem right now. In a couple of hours, he sent us uh, an apologies, which we regularly uh, get from our users. In a couple of more hours, we got asked from him. I was really feeling sorry about this guy. He slept, didn't slap for the whole night. Like in the morning, we actually replied to him. The situation was quite clear to us. He just was mismatched with the version of MinJW, which is actually a version of the GCC compiler provided in the MinJW installer, and the real version of the MinJW is actually placing this creepy header under some creepy macro, which they actually changing with each version of MinGW, and we still try to grab this correct version out of the MinGW and shows it in C line, but who cares? Uh, second case, uh, when we started the C line uh, for the first time, like with the version 1.0, we started getting lots of feedback like that, and we couldn't deal, like we couldn't find out what was the reason. And then we found out that on a welcome screen, we have all these plugins that you can set up at, like a default, and there is a Vim plugin which is a fantastic Vim emulation mode, which I'm really a big fan of. But like, you know, the p what the people are doing when they are installing the software? They're just clicking all the buttons. And here comes the joke about the Vim that I used it for three years. Did you like it that much? No, I couldn't find how to quit. That was the situation. We added a warning. We have an instruction how to provide a debugger log to us. And we thought it was crystal clear, but we were mistaken. We got a bunch of feedback about this instruction. Even some guy who actually collected the log but decided not to send it to us because he didn't find anything interesting there, you know? <laughs> uh, and finally, we had to add actually the command to the step number three here because while we thought it's crystal clear, the people are still doing the reproduce the problem step before adding the actual setting. Don't do that, sorry. And I'm gonna finish actually with my favorite pieces. So like, the first one is a very long one. You can read it, but it's really nice. The second one we got from a university professor who complained that his students is actually thinking that the, the Python code is correct if the PyCharm is not complaining. So he was blaming us about that. And I like the third one because actually some guy who wrote us that if we provide him our address, he will order a pizza for the whole team. Thank you.